Alright, pull up a juice box and a beanbag chair. You see that giant sign on the corner every single day. You know, the one with all the numbers that seem to change based on the mood of the universe. You stare at it, and a single tear starts rolling down your cheek as you fill up your car, wondering how it's even possible that you're paying the price of a fancy dinner just to drive to work. How did you make it this far in life without understanding why this happens? Today, I'll explain why gas prices fluctuate to you like you're five years old. And by the end of this, you'll be the person at the party who can confidently explain the global energy market instead of just complaining about it. Let's start with the most basic rule of the grown-up world. Supply and demand. I know it sounds complicated, but it's not. It's just a fancy way of saying how much of a thing there is versus how many people want the thing. Imagine you open up a lemonade stand. You've got a big pitcher of lemonade. That's your supply. And all the thirsty people walking by who want your lemonade? That's the demand. It's a super hot day and tons of people want lemonade, but you've only got the one pitcher. Now, you can charge more for each cup. Why? Well, because people are desperate, of course, and you've got something that they want. That's high demand and low supply, which makes the price go up. Now, what if you made the 10 giant pitchers of lemonade, but it's a cold, rainy day and nobody's thirsty? Well, you have way more lemonade than people want. You'll have to lower your price, maybe even just give it away just to get rid of it. That is high supply and low demand, which makes the price go down. Now, gasoline works the exact same way. The price that you pay at the pump is just the final number after a whole lot of people play the supply and demand game. The price changes because the amount of gasoline available and the number of people who want it are always, always changing. It is a never-ending game of tug-of-war. So let's look at the four main things that decide who wins that game. Think of them as four giant building blocks that stack up to make the final price on the sign. Now the first and biggest block is the price of the main ingredient, crude oil. You can't make gasoline without crude oil. It's the dinosaur juice that we suck out of the ground. It's the flour that you need to bake a cake. If you can't get flour, you can't make a cake. And if the price of flour suddenly doubles, then the price of your cake is going to go up too, right? I mean, you're not going to sell a cake for less than it costs you to make it. That would just be silly. Crude oil is the biggest part of the cost of gasoline, usually more than half. So when the price of crude oil goes up, the price of gas is definitely going to go up. I mean, it has to. But why does the price of crude oil change? Well, remember our lemonade stand? It's all about supply and demand. A lot of the world's oil is controlled by a group of countries that decided to work together. Think of them as the bosses of the world's oil playground. Now this club can get together and decide to turn the oil faucet down. They can also choose to pump less oil out of the ground entirely. And when they do that, the world's supply of oil gets smaller. And what happens when supply goes down but everyone still needs to drive their cars and fly their planes? That's right, the price goes up. They can also decide to just turn the faucet up and to pump more oil. Now this increases the supply, and if the demand stays the same, then the price will usually go down. But it's not just them. Things happening all around the world can also mess with the oil supply. Let's say a big oil producing country suddenly has a big problem, like a major storm or a huge political argument. Well, that can make it a lot harder for them to get their oil out to the rest of the world. And suddenly, the world's supply of oil shrinks. Everyone gets a bit nervous that there won't be enough to go around. And when grown-ups get nervous about not having enough of something, they're usually willing to pay a lot more to make sure that they get it. So, the price of crude oil goes up. And because crude oil is the flour for our gasoline cake, the price of gasoline goes right up along with it. So, that's the first giant block, the cost of crude oil. It's the biggest and most wobbly block of them all. And the second block is called refining. Crude oil that comes out of the ground is thick, sticky, and honestly pretty useless. I mean, you can't put that junk directly into your car. It has to be cooked. A refinery is like a giant, complicated kitchen where they take the crude oil and cook it into different things, like gasoline, diesel fuel, and jet fuel. Now, these refineries are huge, expensive, and there really aren't that many of them. So what happens if one of these giant kitchens has to close? Maybe a big hurricane hits the coast where a bunch of refineries are located, or maybe a really old one has to shut down for repairs. Well, when a refinery closes, even for just a little while, the amount of gasoline being made goes down. The supply of gasoline shrinks. And what happens when there's less gasoline for all the cars that need it? You guessed it, the price goes up. It's like if the only pizza place in your town closed for a week. Well, the one other place that sells frozen pizzas at the grocery store would suddenly be very popular and they might just raise their prices because they know you have no other choice. Refineries also have to change the recipe for gasoline depending on the season. 
In the summer, they have to make a special, more expensive blend of gasoline that doesn't evaporate as quickly in the heat, and in the winter, they can switch to a cheaper blend. Now that switchover period in the spring can cause supply hiccups and make prices jump a little. I mean, right before everyone wants to start driving around on vacation. Which brings us to you. You're also part of the problem. The third block is distribution and marketing. Now, this one is pretty simple. Once the gasoline is made at the refinery, it has to get to you. It has to be put on big ships, in long pipelines, and on giant trucks to travel across the country to the gas station on your corner. All of that moving costs money. The people who drive the trucks need to get paid. The companies that own the pipelines need to make a profit, and the gas station owner on the corner needs to make money too. They have to pay for the building, the lights, the pumps, and the person working inside who sells you lottery tickets and questionable hot dogs. All of those costs get added into the final price that you pay. If the cost of trucking goes up, then the price of gas goes up a tiny bit as well. The further the gas has to travel from the refinery, well, the more it might cost. And the fourth and final block is the one that nobody likes to talk about. Taxes. Every single time you buy a gallon of gas, a chunk of that money goes straight to the government. There's a federal tax on every gallon, and then each state adds its own tax on top of that. Some states have really high gas taxes, and some, they have lower ones. And this is why gas can be way more expensive in one state as compared to the one right next door. The government uses this money to pay for things like fixing roads and building bridges. So, you're paying a tax to fix the very roads that you're driving on. It's kind of like your dad taking a dad tax on your Halloween candy to pay for the car that he used to drive you around trick-or-treating. It's annoying, sure, but it's just part of the deal. These taxes don't change day to day, but they do make up a pretty significant chunk of the price that you see on the sign. So, you have these four blocks. The cost of crude oil, the cost of refining, the cost of getting it to the station, and the taxes. But the thing that makes it all bounce around so much is that very first idea we talked about. Demand. Your demand, my demand, everyone's demand. Demand for gas changes with the seasons. In the summer, school is out, the weather is nice, and everyone wants to go on vacation. People drive more, they take long road trips, they go to the beach, they go camping, and the demand for gasoline shoots way up. It's peak lemonade stand season, and when demand goes up, what happens to the price? It goes up too. Gas station owners know that you're more likely to pay a little extra to make those happy vacation memories. And in the winter, people tend to stay home a bit more. The weather is bad and there are fewer holidays where people drive long distances by car. People are simply just driving to work and back and the demand for gasoline goes down. And when demand goes down, the price tends to follow. It's that cold, rainy day at the lemonade stand all over again. So even though you feel powerless, your driving habits, multiplied by millions of other people, create the demand that helps steer the price. When a news report says that the economy is doing great, that can also make gas prices go up. Why? Well, because if the economy is good, it usually means that more people have jobs to drive to and more businesses are shipping products around the country using big trucks. And all that activity means more demand for fuel. And so there you have it. It's not some mystery and it's not a conspiracy by the gas station on the corner to ruin your day. The price of gas is a big, messy recipe with four main ingredients. The cost of the raw dinosaur juice, the cost of cooking it into gas, the cost of bringing it to you, and the government slice. The price of that first ingredient, the crude oil, changes constantly because of global events and decisions made by people on the other side of the world. And the ability to cook it changes if a refinery has a bad day. And the amount that everyone wants to buy changes with the seasons and the health of the economy. And when all those wobbly pieces come together, you get a price that's always jumping up and down. So, the price of gas is just a giant game of supply and demand played all over the world. There's the supply of crude oil, the supply of refined gasoline, and then there's the demand from every person with a car who needs to get somewhere. The price you pay is just the scoreboard in that game. You see, you get it now. It's not magic. It's just a bunch of grown-ups arguing over lemonade, and you're the one who has to drink it. Congratulations, you're now officially smarter than almost everyone else you know on this topic. I mean, you're basically an oil market analyst for toddlers. So go forth and complain about gas prices with a newfound sense of intellectual superiority. You've earned it.